welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, and we have a super special guest, two of them. Today, we have Mr. Vash Guy, as always, and of course, the, the magic behind Wondrous Journeys, the person who was big part of it, Mr. Chris. How are you, Chris? And thank you so much for joining the channel today. Thank you so much. I'm doing great. Hello there, Christopher Linertz. Um, this is a fantastic um, uh, privilege. Uh, we are very honored, very humbled. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for taking us up on, 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 you know, finding out what, 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 what happened here. Because wondrous journeys. I, I don't know if you've heard the reviews. I don't know if you've, if you've seen the social media presence. Um, it is just getting unbelievable reviews from the entire. Uh, Disney community. Uh, it's it's very rare to have a show debut at Disneyland that gets this much universal praise. And so we want to thank you for 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 everything because this show is truly phenomenal. Fantastic. Oh well, thank you. I, I have seen some of that, so I, I I appreciate that. And it's like that's that's why we do all this is to is to really like you know we do it for the fans and for the people who you know where Disney is so important in their lives. So it's it's glad to. For us, it, we were really glad to see that, that it connected with them so much. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ethan, uh, uh, t take it away. Yeah. Let's say, well, man, like, first of all, I'm curious, how long does it take to develop a show like this? Like, how long were, were you working on this show? I mean, we, we, I probably was working on this show for, it was almost a year. It was probably about 10 months. Um, from the very initial conversations, at least the conceptual conversation was about ten months, and and, those, and there were lots of people. There were lots of people working long before I I come came on board as well. So, right, I, I believe uh, was it Casey Wilkerson, Jordan Peterson. We have some others who yep. were uh, you know working on uh, working on this obviously, and that's what they said about it, around a year, which which was a stunning. Ooh. Uh, number <laughs> to actually hear because yeah, a long time. Uh, very very long time um what was the conception what was the pitch what was the yeah, you know, was... thing that you were doing did it say consistent with that uh did you bring that vision to life do you think yeah well i think i mean the pitch really came uh initially to me from jordan uh peterson okay. and it was the i i mean we knew from the very get-go that you know we had sort of an obligation and an edict to make sure we touched every single animated film uh, from Disney because it was the 100th anniversary and we wanted to make sure we did that. Um, so I, we knew that was that was definitely going to be involved. And from a very, very early pitch, um, the, the plan was to really bring to life, not only have it be a, you know, the story of Disney animation. So making sure we touched all the properties, making sure we told a journey of how that developed and how things, you know, went from, from the simplest, you know, starting it at, at, you know, uh, Steamboat Willie and starting it at, and, you know, in the early, early nostalgia, of, you know, of Snow White and the classics, but making, going all the way up to the most recent um, and even including, you know, the, the upcoming film Wish, um, we knew we wanted to touch on all that, but the other thing that Jordan was very, very serious about was making sure that we gave life and 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 a and a respect to the actual animators, to the artists that made this all happen and came to life. And and so from the early stages, there was always so much talk about we want to have sketches, we want to have work. We were working with this the animation to show how you know, the butterflies would come to life, how individual character sketches. So it wasn't always going to be a finished, you know, a finished sketch of, uh, or a finished animation of, of Moana. There was going to also be, you know, con concept art and initial sketches and, and pencil sketches of, of all different characters. And I think that's one of the things he, he wanted to bring everyone behind the scenes um, and, and really have them appreciate and, and just show so much love and, and, gratitude for the artists and the amazing talent that all of these amazing women and, and men have had over so many years uh, with Disney. Um, so that was really the initial pitch. But then the, uh, the next part of the pitch, which came from, from Jordan and from Michael Young, one of our producers, was the, the, the idea that we want to go on this artist's journey um, that, that, you know, much unlike a lot of the other Disney shows, our villain 
if there was a villain, uh, you know, if, if, is not going to be a, a an actual villain. Our 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 villain and our show and our story that we take the audience on is self doubt, and yeah. so it's really brought to life with both music and these amazing quotes that were you know handpicked from these many films that we could choose from to really tell that story of you know a blossoming young artist who doubts and who doubts herself and then you know realizes that to follow that dream uh is really truth and is really that freedom and that's where you'll find you know success and that's where you'll be able to spread spread joy and happiness and so it was really a great pitch you know and this was probably back last february that we heard this like we want to take our listeners our audience the people standing on main street and in front of the castle we want to take them on a journey where they feel like they have they go up they go on a journey they they realize what's behind the animations but also really in their heart they feel like they you know they can they can experience the 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 self-doubt that that any artist might have but then get beyond that and really you know succeed like you know as in a hercules or a or a moana wood to really you know push past your self-doubt and realize that you can do it and you can bring to life something that is you know so magical that it it literally you know affects everyone else's lives in the whole world and that was really the, the point of the show and, wow. and, yeah, and <laughs> just incredible <laughs> just incredible <laughs> i um i i didn't really pick up on, on the self-doubt being a villain but you're totally right um mm -hmm. it's it's definitely the i i, I suppose the antagonist of oh, the piece and it's yeah. just um absolutely uh, uh phenomenal um <laughs> i think uh even if i could speak for you for just one moment i think oh, uh, one of our favorite parts of this entire piece yes i was gonna the, ask about that one <laughs> Okay, is is the quartet right? This mm -hmm. mashup of uh, four songs: "Go a Distance" uh, from Hercules, "Bell," the reprise of if I'm not mistaken from Beauty and the Beast, "How Far I'll Go" from Moana, okay. and "Out There" from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, this mashup of songs and how they're so disparate, different, different keys. Beautiful. Even <laughs> I mean, where did you know where where, where that? Uh, what challenges did that actually bring with it? Um, How did you guys do that? And maybe if there's an inspiration for that, that would be amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the inspiration of it came um, early on when I was talking to to Jordan. You know, I said what what I because we were going to use different quotes and different uh, you know, and we and different um, clips from animated from Aunt Disney animation, but we weren't going to necessarily go chronological order. We weren't trying to tell a story in order. We were trying to tell a new story. I said, we really need to do that with lyrics and songs as well. And we need to tell you, we need to use lines that already exist and put them together in new ways and put different characters together. Sometimes having, you know, different, um, different ages and, and, and genders and, and, and styles of music telling our story um, to tell this new story. And I said, one of the things that will allow us to do that is to really, you know, use this technique, which, um, you know, uh, it's in theater, it's called a quote libe, um, okay. but in, but in, in, in my, but which means a bunch of stuff happening at once um, from different songs. Uh, but what Lin-Manuel tries to always calls it, he and uh, Alex Lackmore always say it's an all skate. And at the end of like, at the end of the first act in so many musicals, whether it be Les Mis or, or, or um, you know, or, or Hamilton or whatever, you'll hear, usually it's a really big act one closer that has snippets of all of the songs from act one, all put together and with the characters coming back and remind, basically reminding the audience all of the different conflicts that are going on in the play before you take an intermission and then come back and see those conflicts resolved. Um, so what we decided is, is this quartet was going to kind of act as our end one closer or act one closer. And we, we knew we wanted it to be big, but I, but we started looking, we started saying, what, what multiple of songs can we put together and tell this story in a way that it hasn't been told before. So it feels like a new story. And then we, we, we really started going in and looking at which lines of which lyrics sort of 
fit in. And, and it's really the, you know, uh, originally, I think in our, in our story discussions, it was it, the, 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 the heading of this section was called um, leaping. And it was supposed to really, it was supposed to be when any hero sets out on their journey to find something greater than themselves. Right. And so we really said, mm -hmm. we're going to take the best lines from all of these songs and put them or for a bunch of songs and put them together as if we were we were a group of heroes going on this journey and people will be able to rate relate to one or all of the characters um so that was part, sort of the first thing we we decided we were going to do and then the next thing that we decided there've been a lot of like uh you know a lot of medleys and mashups um i think the the biggest was probably a trio that a lot of people uh know really well um, and there's certainly a lot of duets where they take, you know, two songs put together. So we knew we wanted to one up that. And we said, we got, so we have to do four. And then the other thing I said, we, we, I really want to make sure that it's not all one composer and it's not all one era of Disney. Um, oh, so I said, so, you know, so I, I said, it can't all be Alan. Um, and, and I, wor I worked with Alan for, you know, almost a decade now. Uh, on, on a lot of different things, uh, including Gallivant and, and a couple of films and things like that. Um, and it'd be easy to make a great quartet with just Mencken songs. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 we said it can't just be that. It has to be. It has to be Alan. Has to be other you know lyricists and writers, and it has to be um, uh, disparate characters and dis and different eras of Disney Entertainment. So we started really looking into well, what songs would fit together really really well and be really like fun to hear together in in a way like if, like if you were going to see a music festival and you were mm -hmm. trying to feel like well what would my favorite band, what would my favorite bands be that kind of go together you know and, and would the, could you imagine a whole day long where you had you know uh elton john and you know and uh you two and dr dre and you know, uh, Stevie Wonder or something like, so we were trying to think of like, what would go really well together? Um, and we knew we, it couldn't all be princesses and it couldn't all be like princes or, 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 or young, you know, Hercules kind of heroes. Um, it needed to be all across the board. And so we said, well, we should definitely try to include quasi partially because that's one of the most amazing songs I think ever written, uh, yeah, for theater or movies. And that's, that's, that's uh, one of Alan's most beautiful, beautiful songs and melodies. Unbelievable. Um, obviously, you know, obviously Belle is a huge, huge, like, favorite, but it's also got that amazing, you know, I want adventure in the Great White Summer. Like, that is one of the most amazing lines ever written uh, by the amazing Howard Ashman, of course. Of course. Um, and it's just, we, we felt like we had to include that. Okay, so now we have... We knew we wanted to include, you know, uh, out there. We knew we wanted to include um, Belle. And and then we're like, okay, well, Belle going into Hercules works great because um, Hercules has that, you know, yearning, that 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 wishing uh, to, to go on a journey. And, 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 and it had that nobility um, and those amazing lyrics by, by Dave Zippel. And, and we're like, that's great. So now we, we kind of had those three. And I said, but but we really need, it can't all be Mencken and it can't all be um, that era. It can't right. all be the, the, the 90s, mm -hmm. 2000s. And I said, we need something from, for that's, that's more recent. And, and we really felt, well, what's kind of the, um, you know, who's the, the more modern um, and, and quite frankly, the more modern and, um, you know, uh, younger, maybe not so younger, but, but a, a very different kind of Hercules or a kind of young hero with big aspirations, and and it had to be Moana. Um, not to mention, I'm a huge Lin Manuel fan, so sure. so I, I kind of we kind of finally locked in on it being those four songs, and and we said, well, now we've got to make we've got to tell this story, and we really went through and one by one went through each line of each song and figured out, well, if this line from this character actually flows into this line from that character. They'll, it actually sounds like they're answering each other's questions or they're an, or they're finishing each other's senses. So when you hear them at points saying like, how far I'll go, I guarantee I'll be strong. They're actually, it's almost like they're having a conversation with each other. And that was absolutely by design. 
we, we really decided to do that from the very get-go and Jordan was on board Michael was on board um, I gotta give a huge shout out to Alex Karukas um, who did all the vocal arrangements and all those amazing uh, intricate harmonies and and everything for this uh, this particular part of the show and then a lot of the show um, and we work together all the time he's really my music director and um, and so we all conceived of this very much together um, and then you know and then we we we, we, we sort of chipped away at it and really molded it like clay until we got it to the point where it sort of felt like a brand new song with lots of things you recognize but it's telling this great you know this great story from start to finish with of course this amazing huge ending um that we thought like this is something that can stand on its own as a piece of art but it's this piece of art that's made out of four of the most amazing classics ever written by the greatest composers and lyricists in history. And, uh, and, and how do we then finish it, showcase it, and have it be sort of like the end of act one and the end of sort of this, the, this launch into the rest of our story. And I, I, I think we, you know, judging by the response, I think we did it and I think we're successful. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it's, it's one of the parts that, that I think I and, and all of us, Alex, everybody else, were the most proud of. Um, and I think hopefully it's something that people are going to want to hear for a long time. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Wow. I know you're. Uh, I know you're a, a, a metal fan, a guitar player, and mm -hmm. you know when I think about uh, oh, bands yeah. harmonizing, I think of like the I don't know the, the the big four of thrash metal, you know, all coming together. And but uh, in this way, for for uh, you know this 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 basically new Disney composition, I thought it was just just brilliant. Uh, uh, Ethan, go ahead. Do you have uh, another question for the uh, for Chris? Oh man, I just want to say that was like. Wow, that was incredible! Like so much thought, and it's just that one. Well, it's a decent, uh, decent part, but no wonder it's so perfect. Because it's, I feel like you took most of your year to d just think about that one part. That was incredible. So, Chef's Kiss. That was like, as Dre and I agree, that part is like literally perfection. It's, perfect. it's perfection. It can't. I, you know, I, I've, I've <laughs> you know, we as uh, Disney fans, we, we break this stuff down and we critique mm. it so much and we become cynical and jaded to some things. And uh, with, with that segment, I mean, it's just there's just I, there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing I can say uh, to to uh, critique in any way. I've, I've always told people, yeah, that's just perfect. It's just it's just a perfect, a perfect segment uh, right there. And how you. You know how you engage the audience and rapture the audience, even from the very mm -hmm. get-go, using uh, similar techniques with uh, with you know Snow White. I'm wishing, you know, and uh, going into yeah. Sleeping Beauty. Um, I wonder, just uh, it just brings the house down every single time. I mean, the the gasps from seeing that concept art on screen become mm -hmm. colorized, and the beautiful imagery that you see on Sleeping Beauty Castle and Main Street when that uh, occurs is just wonderful oh thank you yeah we really you know we i think we knew we had something special um and we and we sort of just try everyone trusted each other to to sort of do their part and bring it to life and every time you know every time someone heard a piece of music an artist got ex you know would, would, would let us know oh my god that that inspires me to do this with 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 the projection or 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 the the you know our 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 pyro department would say, oh, well, you know what we could do here because you made this amazing flourish when, you know, when you got to this particular note, well, this is when we'll do a certain kind of, of, of blossoming firework or something. And, and, and it very much worked the other way where we would see some of these amazing, amazing, uh, you know, early projection designs. And I would, and we would just go, oh my God, the, 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 the sparkle and the, and the way that it sort of, you know, the way that it moves makes it feel like, um like glistening you know woodwinds and so when we did the orchestrations and the and, and and recorded the orchestra we would actually feature you know interpretations and orchestrations and and instruments and techniques that sort of were very much in response to visual and audio and story designs that we had been hearing from the artists that we were you know collaborating with so it was a very much a back and forth process for that that whole you know almost year period where I think we all inspired each other to do uh, to do things, and you know, and that goes back to what you said two minutes, a couple minutes ago, which is like, sure. we're all of us were fans. Like I am mm -hmm. the biggest, I am the most ridiculous Alan Menken, 
you know, uh, David Zippel, Lynn Manuel, Lopez's, Richard Sherman. I am the hugest fan of, of all of their music, so much so that, like, I felt like it was the most humbling honor and, obli- you know, and the hugest obligation to take what they did and keep every bit of magic that they gave us and just craft it into some something new, taking their all the love that they put into what they did and being able to then craft it in a new way so a whole new generation can go to the park and experience it. And I know that's what I did with the music, and I know for sure that's what the animators and the and the, and the artists and, and, and everyone dealing with all of the elements of the show really did that as fans. And that really goes back to having a hundred years of magical animation yeah. to pay tribute to, mm-hmm. um, and that's that was our goal from the get go. That is uh, that is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I I believe it's an eighty piece orchestra and sixteen lead vocalists, thirty three voice choir Ooh. to bring these these kind of eighteen Disney songs, uh, you know, plus uh, a, a new song. It's you know, it's wondrous uh, in there. Right. I mean, that that's got to be a big kind of challenge, right? Because you only got yeah. about thirteen minutes, right? And you have to cover one hundred years of animation. You have to feature every single every single uh, Disney animated film 62 of them including wish as you as you uh so so noted uh how you know how i mean how do you even yeah. start to decide what comes in what comes out when you have how so you, many great songs to choose from how do you pick which one which segment you go longer than the other one yeah honestly that was so it's 13 and a half minutes and that was i think that was the hardest part because there is such a wealth of material Mm -hmm. the lists of things we loved were so long that we we really had to figure out we can't show it all yeah we can't play Mm -hmm. it all we can't include every song so at that point we said okay we want to make sure we live in we had it very much broken up into sections almost like a symphony or an opera okay and we knew there was you know the, the 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 opening song and the ending thing on both sides, and we knew that there was a, a nostalgic section, and we knew there was this hero's jer- setting off in a hero's journey, and then there was the the flying leaping section that then had a downturn, and we, we had this whole journey that was planned out, and so what we really figured out was like we knew roughly how long we wanted each section to be, and then we would go try to find songs that would give us the correct feeling and 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 either the right tempo or we would rearrange them in, in new tempos and new arrangements, you know, like we did with first time in forever for flying, which, you know, was, was, was very different than the version in the movie. Um, but it was, it was done in a way where I orchestrated it to be much more like a piece of flying score, uh, like you'd see in a movie like Rocketeer or, or whatever else. And, and, and so for us, we started doing this and then we really, you know, there was a lot of time where this show was, you know, in the twenty low twenty minute range, and we knew it couldn't be that long oh, man. Uh, for so many reasons. And, and then it was like it was really like carving away at a sculpture and being like, mm-hmm. well, what 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 can we carve away at and still get the feeling we need in our audience? And what has to stay? And and part of it was 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 we had to cut certain songs, and and then other songs we we uh, you know we we made shorter. And the other thing that that's one of the reasons we did so many. Uh, medleys, whether it be like you said, with with wishing and 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 um, and that whole section, which included when you wish and all those things. One of the reasons is we didn't want to cut songs, and the only way to get it shorter was to actually have the songs, you know, land on top of each other in, in, a, in a medley. And then we, once we realized that we had to do that, then we came, then we said, okay, well, how do we do that and keep telling our story? And that's when we really came up with this idea of. Of, of having the, the different songs talk with each other in a conversation. And that, like you said, that happened a few times. Yeah, um, and now, that was just to get more material. Very, very good. Cool. Go for, um, curious, because you had so many songs to choose, so many, so many songs you said you cut, you had to cut off. Was there a, like a, any mandates, like from the higher ups at Disney saying you have to have this song in the show? I don't care where it is. You just have to represent this, like in Kanto or something. Or do they give you complete control where you can choose whatever songs you wanted? Um, I don't know that there was any mandates from from Disney as a whole. 
there was definitely there were songs that that Jordan and Michael in their initial pitch were like, I need I need this song in here because it does this for me dramatically. And mm -hmm. and and quite honestly, Dos, Or Dos Orguitos was one of them. Um, and they and Jordan really wanted to make sure that was in there because it he felt like that would be great towards the end of a show to come back from uh, 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 from self doubt. Um, that was in there. Um, and of course, when you wish upon a star was very much you know mm -hmm. always in play earlier um, because it's so iconic. Um, and and there was a handful of there was a, everybody had favorites and 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 songs that they really wished that they that would be in there, and so they fought for them. And then it, then we really it was a very collaborative effort where we would come in every week and say, all right, we looked at the story again. Here's here's the songs that we think will tell the story we want to tell. And then we'd sort of, you know, all try to cast doubt of like, OK, well, that's great. But does that tell the story as well as this other one? Right. Or is it too slow? What if, what if, you know, I understand that you want to tell this kind of a, this kind, you want to make this kind of emotion, but that's a slow song and we've been slow for a while. We need the energy to go up. Is there a, is there a faster, more energetic song that still gets the same emotion? And we would sort of like start to check songs off and put songs in, 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 you know, higher up on the list until we got to the point where we, you know, we were probably down in the, in the, you know, mid twenties, uh, to high to 30 songs at one point. Um, uh, and that was probably when the show was 20 some minutes long. And then we're like, all right, well now how do we really cut it down? And, and we started doing some of our medleys and mashups. And we also, you know, we also started to have to be a little bit, uh, rec you know, a little bit, uh, 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 you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, reckless and, yeah. and be like, we want this song, but we literally can't fit it in. Um, and so, so we had to lose more and, and really come out with the ones that we thought told the story the best and the ones that, you know, that would resonate with fans of all generations. And that right. was the other thing that may have been an edict, I think, was because, you know, because we're telling a hundred year story of Disney animation, we had to make sure that each, that all the eras of history in Disney were represented well enough. So it didn't feel like it skewed too much in any one era um, because our fans are going to be all different ages and it's going to be grandparents and, and grandkids and, and people who have, have, have people who remember when, you know, when Snow White first came out and there'd be people who literally the first movie they ever went to was, was in Kanto. Right. So we need to, we mm -hmm. needed to sort of hit, we needed to make sure we satisfied everybody's love of Disney animation. And, and we had to be really, you know, respectful and we get to honor that in a way that that gave f a, a, enough respect to every era of all these amazing movies that they made uh, um and it's it's an it's an incredible task i mean i i believe every single you know section was uh, uh casey wilkerson i believe um uh described it as kind of chapters right and you have like uh, fly and you have fall and so forth and so things kind of have to fit i can see kind of how it's like you got to be rigid you know it's like hey I i'd like to include this song but it doesn't doesn't quite fit the story where we're going the transitions and so forth and mm -hmm. um that's that's a, that's a really tough task because you might be you know everybody kind of has their sacred cow but you know mm -hmm. doesn't we, we can't feature them all and that's um <laughs> That that's got to be an incredible, uh, an incredible process, and, and so um, many songs, like crazy. so, so many songs, so many songs. Um, uh, I um, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I don't know if you can comment on this. If you can't, it's totally fine. It's totally cool. Um, but I wanted to ask you really fast. We've seen a casting call for a show at the Hyperion at uh, Disney California Venture, and I saw your name pop up as part of uh, that whole thing. Um, you don't have to go, you know, you don't have to give us details on the theme or, or whatever, yes, yeah. but is yeah, that uh, is that an accurate thing you're working on right now? Should we be excited? You absolutely should be excited. I can tell you that much. Okay. And yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it literally day and night right now. Really? Um, mm -hmm. And all I can tell you is it's, it's going to be amazing. Um, and no, I can't tell you what it is or what it's about. No, that's fine. Uh, that's but, fine. But, you're, you know, it, it, it will it will come out, you know, it, it, probably in the not-too-distant future. But I will say 
that it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be really special um, to, you know, that, that theater has been, you know, been, been closed since COVID. Yeah. And, yep. and mm-hmm. I think this, when everyone hears what it is and, and imagines and sees like the details and then goes and experiences it, I think it's going to be, it's going to be the perfect um, show to sort of re reopen the, the theater and, and, and just bring, bring a lot of magic to life that Disney fans, you know, I think seem to really want. Um, and I think, uh, I think they're gonna be excited when it happens. Um, but, but I will say, uh, you know, it's going to be really great and it's, it's a big, big concept. Um, and we are, we are definitely shooting, uh, shooting for the stars on this one. And I think it's going to be something that, that people are going to really enjoy. It's such a big deal for, you know, the, 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 even like the, the park hopper option, right. To have a show at DCA, to have a show in that theater is a big, big deal to fans, uh, to, to people of all ages for people who, you know, I mean, let's be honest, that attraction, I mean, I'm sorry, that, uh, that, that, um, a theme park doesn't feature a whole lot of attractions that really augments their day and so forth. So we are, uh, I can tell you right now, we are incredibly excited to see to see where you're at there. And yes, it's been a long time. So uh, we wish yeah, you okay. the very, very best in that pursuit. Um, Ethan, uh, f- uh, final thoughts? You know, yeah, you <laughs> you got me uh, very excited about that theater because, uh, you know, fun fact, I've actually never been inside that theater. So your show will be my first oh, time. No. Seeing that, uh, being in that theater, oh, I'm very excited for it. I'm um, very honored, and I, I, I hope we make you very happy. I really do. You know, you got me. If, if it's anything like Wondrous Journeys, and it sounds like it will be, I think I'm already pretty happy. Yeah. And do you have a? Uh, amazing. Would you like the our lovely subscribers to follow you anywhere? You have any non Disney projects you want to promote before we leave, or? Anything? Yeah, I have, t- I have tons of stuff. I'd be happy. I'm on all the socials, and I think uh, uh, C. Leonard's music on on uh, on I believe uh, Insta is that one. Twitter's I did I think just C. Leonard's, um, mm-hmm. and I'm also on Facebook and 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 uh, and TikTok. Although I'm I'm not dancing much. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> exactly. um, but uh, but yeah, I mean I've got besides all of the amazing Disney stuff that I'm doing. Um, uh, including a Disney Plus movie that's going to come out uh, later this year. Uh, mm-hmm. Also got a lot of great, uh, uh, great stuff like uh, the boys on Amazon and that spinoff. Uh, and I'm writing, I'm writing a musical, uh, you know, for Broadway as well as uh, as directing and writing a uh, a musical animated short film uh, that actually wrote the story and the song for. Uh, and we're 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 doing that uh, as well. And that should be. Uh, at festivals and things later this year um so yeah there's a lot of really really great stuff uh coming and um yeah and follow me and follow along and and you'll get lots of good little uh little hints over the next couple months of, of what's coming up uh at the park oh i, I oh, and uh whenever, whenever that show debuts uh, we might have to we have to call you back <laughs> we, we <laughs> might have to we might have to pick your brain on that because i am incredibly excited happily I will be happy to come back on for that. Fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic. With all that stuff going on, I'm surprised you're able to even come on today. So thank you very much. Seems like you're like busy. Oh, oh, I'm driving in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Two birds, one stone. I love it. Any final thoughts, Dr. Dre? Oh no! I just uh, just t- thank you so much for coming on, for sharing your time with us. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, just like. Um, and just like your songs, you know, you, sometimes you, you know you, you, one has to take uh, on over the other, right? And and, mm-hmm. and in, in order to fit everything in, and we we are so appreciative and, and grateful that uh, you provided us uh, y- your time there. I know you're in traffic, so hopefully uh, your commute went a little bit better today uh, than others. So thank <laughs> you so much. Better. Yeah, and uh, thanks, yeah, guys. Thank Appreciate it. So much. Thank you. And boy, have a great day. Take care. Thank thank you, you, much. you bet. Bye. Bye. Hey, wait. And subscribe, everyone here, to Theme Park Wizard. Have a wondrous day.